Hi, welcome to Driving TV and I hope you are well. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about some of the common questions about the driving test. So the questions I get asked about the driving test, I'm going to share with you in this video some of the common ones I get asked about the driving test. Hopefully, they will answer your questions if they are your question. Let's start the lesson. So number one, if I am waiting on a traffic light, do I wait on first gear or do I wait on neutral? This is one of the common questions I get asked by the learners, is that when they are waiting on the traffic light, should they be waiting on a neutral or should they wait on first gear? Now the answer is, it will depend on, if you come to the traffic light and it is already red and you are behind maybe the third car onwards, it is best for you to wait on neutral because you have two cars in front of you when it's green they need to go first and you will have time to get ready and then go it's no point waiting if you are the third car on the queue on first gear because if you need to wait for a while you will be burning petrol you will be burning your clutch you will have pain on your leg because it's constantly working you have to put the clutch down or keep the clutch down so if you go to neutral, you are saving petrol, you are saving your clutch, you are saving the environment, you are saving your health. There are so many things you are doing. So if you are the third car onwards, you will have plenty of time to get ready. So go to neutral, put the handbrake on, go to neutral and wait until it's changing to green. Then get ready. By the time those cars in front gets ready, you will be ready to go. Now the question is, what if I am the first car in the queue? So if you come to the traffic light and you're the first car on the queue, then it will depend on if you just came and it was already red and you're not sure when you're going to be next because you're the first car, because you don't want to be late, do you? So maybe wait on first gear. Put the handbrake on though, go to first gear and wait. So as soon as it's changing, you are already ready so you could go quickly because you're the first car. So if you are the first car, you just came to the traffic light and it's already red, and you don't know when it's going to change yes stop put the handbrake on go to first gear and wait until it's changing so then when it's changed you are already ready on first gear you could move the car on quickly but if you are the third car onwards and you've got a few cars in front of you then maybe handbrake on go to neutral and wait until it's changing then go next is can i use the side mirrors as well as can i use the camera for the reversing so some car it has a camera in front of you when the car is reverse you could see where the car is going on the screen can i use the camera yes you can use the camera technology is part of driving you are allowed to use the camera as well as using the side mirrors if you want but it doesn't mean you're going to use them as your main guideline when the car is reversing you should be looking at the back mainly because that's the way the car is going so you can use the camera for reverse or the side mirrors because it is there to get the information so use them but don't just use that and avoiding looking at the back because that's the way the car is going that's the way you should be looking okay so when you're reversing look at the back mainly and every now and again look at your camera look at the side mirror see what's happening but go back to the way the car is going okay so when you're reversing you should be looking at the back because that's the way the car is going and yes you are allowed to use the camera for reverse or the side mirrors because they will give you the information technology is part of driving you are allowed to use them but you cannot avoid the way the car is going that's the way you should be looking mainly okay now the next question is many learners they get confused is that when i am going left or right what speed should i be going many learners they think that there is a set speed you should be going left and right now your speed will depend on the junction or the road that you are going in how big is the road how sharp it is that will depend on the speed normally it will be look at the mirror slow the car maybe two cars from the junction that you want to go in speed should be around 10 15 go to second gear and then go this will be a normal scenario but it will depend if the junction that you're going in is really narrow and it's sharp maybe go down under 10 go to first gear 
and go with first gear okay so there is no set speed for you to go left and right it will depend on how big or the road that you are going in so the road that you are going in if it's too sharp and it's too narrow then go under 10 go to first gear do the clutch control and make your turn slowly and smoothly if it's not narrow and it's not sharp then maybe go down to 10 around two cars from the junction go to second gear and make your turn one other thing i like to add on that is that sometimes learners they don't get enough time when they are dealing with the junctions especially going left and right and the reason is that is because they don't slow down remember if you need more time all you need to do is slow the car that will give you more time to deal with the junction okay many times the reason you are rushing is because you don't have enough time and the reason you don't have enough time is because you're not slowing the car down just slow the car as much as you need that will give you more time to deal with the junction okay next question is when i'm doing a parking a maneuver maybe a parallel parking or bay parking and i didn't get it right the first time maybe i am too far from the pavement or maybe i am not in the bay when i finish the bay park maybe i am on top of the line can i correct of course you can so if you go into a bay and you are on the line or maybe you've done the parallel parking and you were too far from the pavement what do you do you correct that's part of the test okay so if you didn't do it in one go you should go forward and it should correct is part of your test you won't fail for that okay so whether you are doing the parallel parking or bay parking if you get it wrong first time make sure you correct that's part of your test if you correct it you will pass your test you won't fail for that okay so make sure you correct if it's not correct now this one is not a question but it's a reminder for many learners because many learners they get that wrong and they do fail the test is that when you come to a junction maybe a crossroad or you come to the end of the road and the junction has a stop line okay one solid white line with a stop sign what does it mean it means you have to stop okay now many learners they ask that what if there's nobody there what do i do the stop line is there for you to stop there's no question it's not about what if there's nobody there what do i do you just stop that's what the stop line means okay so there is no question you ask if there's a stop line if there's a stop line there you don't ask question you just stop then see if it's safe and then you go okay so let me repeat if you come to a junction and the junction has a stop line with a stop sign don't ask questions if it's free can i go stop line means you stop regardless okay and the other thing is it's not going to be safe for you to go you won't be able to see if it's safe or not because and this is the reason why there's a stop line there the stop line is there because the junction is either closed or you can't see unless you stop that's why it's there so the question about there's nobody there can i go the answer is you won't be able to see if this if there's somebody there or not that's why it's there that's the reason why there is a stop line okay so if it's a stop line no question you just stop then see if it's safe and then you go the other question many learners ask is that when i stop do i have to put the handbrake on you don't have to put the handbrake on the law is to stop now i say you probably watched other videos when i said that every time you stop on a stop line put the handbrake on i say put the handbrake on is because if you put the handbrake on that confirms you stop fully because what happens is sometimes many learners they stop but the car is actually creeping forward without them knowing the learners they think they've stopped but the car is actually creeping really slowly so they didn't stop fully and then they see if it's safe and then they proceed going the car actually didn't stop fully and that's the problem if the car doesn't stop fully you will fail your test because it is law you have to stop if you don't stop you have broken the law so if you don't stop fully and the car actually creeps forward without you knowing and you just went you will fail your test for that and this is why i say when you stop on a stop line put the handbrake on but you don't have to buy law put the handbrake on as long as you stop fully see if it's safe and then you go that's fine so for you to stop that is the law putting the handbrake on you don't have to but like i said the reason i say as i explained now the next question is how do i impress my driving test or how do i impress the examiner for me to pass the driving test now what do you think if i give you that question how can you impress your examiner 
the answer is just drive the way you should that's the only way you're gonna impress there is no other way there is no magic there's nothing you can do to impress the examiner the only way you're gonna impress the examiner or you're gonna impress your driving test is to drive the way you have been taught to drive by your driving instructor so drive according to the way you should be driving that is the way you will impress now you know how to drive the car the reason you're here is because you know how to drive the only thing you need now is a bit of confidence don't get nervous don't worry too much don't ask too many questions if you do something wrong don't assume you failed it's only 40 minutes that's all you have to drive so give 100 percent you're going to be a little nervous that's fine but just make sure that you don't overthink don't ask too many questions don't be too nervous a bit of confidence will help you to pass the test okay now doesn't matter how strong you are how big you are you will be a little nervous but that's fine that's part of the test that's part of being human when we do any test we're going to be a little nervous that's that's fine but don't be over nervous don't be over cautious when you do something wrong don't assume you failed because then you will fail sometimes you've done something wrong and you think you failed well you're not the judge you know the examiner you've been giving 40 minutes for you to drive give 40 minutes and at the end you will know whether you passed or you failed don't assume you failed many times many learners they assume they failed and they give up and at the end they realize they failed for something after what they thought they failed they didn't fail for that and the reason they fail is because by then they've already gave up so don't assume your job is to drive i always say to my learners there are three people involved in the process of learning and passing the driving test first is your driving instructor second is yourself and third is the examiner so the driving instructor giving you everything you need your job is to drive according to and the examiner will do his or her job according to so don't cross okay your job is to be the learner and do the things you've been taught to do by your driving instructor and that's what you're going to be doing don't judge don't assume don't make the judgment that you failed you go and you do what you need to do and at the end you will get to know whether you pass or you fail and if you need extra help on learning to drive and passing the driving test don't forget to take the advantage of our online course which i will leave a link on the description below have a look read and see if you like it now on a traffic light we have a pelican crossing which is flashing amber okay so many learners they ask if it's a flashing amber what does it mean can i go if it's flashing or do i have to stop until it goes to green now pelican crossing we have red flashing amber and then green so on a pelican we have a flashing amber if it's flashing it means you wait as long as somebody's crossing okay if there's no one crossing even if it's flashing it should be going okay so let me repeat if it's flashing amber on a pelican crossing and there's no one crossing it should be going don't stop okay if it's flashing and there are people crossing on the crossing then wait until they cross fully okay so flashing means if there's nobody there you should be going don't wait and stop carry on going okay so if you approach a traffic light and it is flashing and there's nobody crossing you carry on going don't stop can i go to the test with my own car or do i have to go to the test with a driving instructor no you don't have to go to the test with a driving instructor you could take your own car or your family member's car as long as the car is legal to be on the road legal meaning it is insured it has road tax it has mot it has insurance now this video is sponsored by go shorty and go shorty gives you short-term insurance from one hour to 28 days so this company gives you very short insurance for you to do your test or for you to learn in your family member's car and you could you could insure your car for an hour two hours one day two day one week up to 28 days okay so if you go to the test with your own car or your family member's car and you need to insure your car you could use go shorty i will leave a link on the description below for go shorty so yes you can take your own car to take your driving test just make sure that just because you could take the test in your own car it doesn't mean you could go to the test by yourself you will still need somebody to sit next to you 
who's over 21 and who's had a driving license for last three years plus. So he has to be somebody who's over 21 and also had a driving license for last three years plus. The other question is, do you need to have the dual control in your car? No, you don't need to have dual control in your car. You could just take a normal car with two L plates on and as long as, like I said, the car is insured, MOT and it has tax. So basically legal to be on the road. And there are many questions, I am sure. If you have any questions, which I haven't covered in this video, make sure you ask on the comment and I will try to answer. But for now, for this video, these are the questions I'm sharing with you. I hope they help and I wish you all the best for you to pass the driving test and I hope you pass. If you like the video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe so don't miss any of my future videos and hope to see you again on the next video. Bye for now.